okay, so uh, I'm, I pulled, again, I found this book very fascinating at the time I was reading it over the summer. And I think I pulled some things that I think are important quotes that we're gonna look at. And I'm just gonna read something that's not in the quote, but I'll read the part in yellow. I will not include certain words that I don't think I want to say or should say, I'm going to say. So just to get everyone on board with that, okay. Okay, so I'll start here. But people in London were friendly. They smelled at us and as you pass by. Strangers said, good morning. Everyone talked to me. The woman in line in the grocery store, the people next to me at the restaurant, the students also waiting in an unacceptably long time for the bus. But many of our conversations ended up diverting into race. We don't get a lot of Black people here. London has become very progressive in the last few years. My God, Black people are, are just so funny. Where are you from? No, no, like where are you originally from? Ethiopia, Kenya, Zimbabwe, Africa? As these months and years went on, the seemingly innocuous comments became more ignorant and at times malicious. From the ages of 18 to 22, I learned more about what someone like me brought out in other people than, who I were, than about who I was. I didn't even get a chance to know myself before that I had to fight for myself. In the four years I spent in London, Ontario, this is the highlight section, my undergraduate degree, I was called Ebony, Dark Chocolate, Chiniqua, Ma, and Boo. I counted blackface on Halloween. I was told to go back to my country on several occasions. I was humiliated by a guy shouting, look at that black ass, as I walked down the busy street. I was ethnic conquest for curious white men and for token and a token black friend for white women. I was called a black bitch and a, I was called by my white friends desperately trying to rap every song off a of Yeezy if I was okay to use the around me. I was verbally assaulted and came close to being physically attacked by angry men. I came face to face with white supremacists. I was asked if I spoke English and whether I was suggesting to Canadian winters. When I told people I was born in Canada, they were impatiently badgering me with, but where are you really from? These encounters were about how I was perceived, not who I actually was. Some always, some, someone always in between the worlds, a Canadian born girl with two immigrant parents, a most racial woman with black features and a family of brown people, a daughter raised by a working class mother and a middle class grandparent, the only baby born out of wedlock and a family of all conceived after marriage. Okay, so that's just a snippet of what she's talking about. And I think it's important for she's talking about her experiences and what she went through in there. And it's, again, the purpose of the introduction that she talks about is to get you to understand what she experiences and what she, uh, uh, she deals with. Again, I'm gonna read this other section. A few things did solidify me my identity when I was there. I was black, I was a woman, I was out of place. I didn't identify as black until I got to London. So she talks about the fact that she lived in the time, again, because her mom is uh, uh, Pakistani and she was quite light. Uh, and she grew up in a family of brown people that her experiences were different and people didn't acknowledge that she was a black woman. Okay, and that's interesting thing we'll talk a little bit about in the book we'll talk about that while people may see, uh, again, I don't have black skin, I have brown skin. But when we say black and brown, we talk about the fact that the assumption towards anti-black racism is different than with the experiences that uh, people of South Asian descent have, uh, have faced. And the treatment of those individuals are sometimes different because people of South Asian descent are seen as the model good race, you know, uh, while people who are of uh, African descent are not. Okay, so again, she talks about uh, again very uh, specific writers. These are all writers um, that talk about race and racism within Canada and within the United States. And I just want to go to another section. When we experience it, when our experiences are treated like they don't matter, we deal with them, uh, we learn to deal with them ourselves, especially when the institutions we spent the first years of adulthood on equipped to support us. But young people in post-secondary institutions are today up against the most serious life threatening changing issues. So he talks about the fact that, you know, perhaps these things don't, as a, as a person growing up, I have to deal with uh, racism, I have to deal with the climate crisis, I have to deal with uh, economic uncertainties, 
and all doing that as a black woman in Canada. So again, she's trying to illustrate the struggles that she faces within our society and things she needs to do. This last part I just want to read to you because I just want you to draw the fact that she's going to be talking about things and she's going to talk about things that are you might find upsetting or um, challenging to you and may make you feel uncomfortable. They made me feel uncomfortable too. So here we go. Nothing in this book is sugar-coated for you. It's raw. It's glaring. It's imperfect as is real life. I did not make all the right decisions or all the smart ones. I've made peace with them. I've done my absolute best to recall everything as accurate as I can. At times, this book is distressing. Other times, you will laugh. Some events may bring back painful memories for your own. So guys, remember, this book is about being uncomfortable. And again, it's about an experience that's going to make you uncomfortable. So as you're reading it, you might read through the thing, ah, this doesn't really bother me. You might have experiences where what has happened call back to things that you've gone through. You might have to face up or, or, or hear things that you may not want to hear. But the purpose of it is for her to detail what she experienced in her life for those four periods, uh, dealing with uh, a society. And specifically when we think about Canada, we in Canada like to uh, look to our, our, our friends from the South and wag, wag our fingers, talk about their crazy president, talk about all the things he does, talk about their overtly racist society. And in Canada, we tend to take the attitude that we are not like them. The book is trying to say, oh yeah, we are like them. We have all those same tendencies, we have all the same issues. And while it might not be as severe, the consequences and the treatment of those individuals is, can be just as impactful. Okay, last part I'm gonna read. Finally, this book is for anyone past or present who has struggled to make sense of the post-secondary experiences, for those who feel alone and unheard, for those of you who, who wanna learn more, and for those of you who have the courage to speak up and tell your stories, even in the face of denial and harassment. And this book is special for those who came out at the other hand, broken, but not, but not beat, resilient, but still soft, I see you. Okay. And again, attorney wants to, in her book, let you know that she sees you, that she wants you to um, know that her experiences are real. Now, I think in the book, you'll notice that sometimes between chapters, again, I'm just going to scan through one of these chapters, I'm not going to read anything. Again, I've highlighted things that are important. Is she will occasionally do these little survival guide things. Now they're meant to be funny, but they're meant to draw your attention to the fact that uh, these are the experiences that she has to deal with on top of everything else to be a person of color, especially a black person in society. So I'm just gonna read this quick one because it's kind of funny. And then I'm going to assign some things for you guys to do independently. And this one's called Token in Class, right? So this is a survival guide for token students. And again, Token means that she says that uh, in a class, she might be the only black woman in the class. So therefore she's going to be expected to represent all black people. And here's her uh, tongue in cheek advice, but it's also um, meant to sort of illustrate the struggle she feels with. You may experience the classroom cooties, an unexplainable incurable phenomenon where the lecture hall would be completely full except for the one seat beside you. And some will still choose to sit on the stairs. Group projects will be your undoing. They heard black students aren't high achievers. So these are the easiest part of the project. Like forming the front page, you may feel extremely uncomfortable with the class conversations about racism and slavery. You may be asked in front of everyone if it's okay if the class discuss these topics as if you're the only person responsible for the entire race of black people. Students may not want to engage at all because they are scared that they hurt your feelings or worse, that you call them racist. They may even think, they may even think, say things like, isn't talking about this divisive? And we're all human and I don't see color. There'll be one self-proclaimed woke white person who will try to bond with you by talking about at length about all the way black people continue to be oppressed. But all you wanna talk about are the ways you want to, Michael B. Jordan to oppress you, how I deal with it. And now I'm thinking that no matter how hard you scrub, you always have token cooties in the classroom. So kill them with knowledge, smile, but let them know that Milton spirit twinkle in your eye. Trip them up by sitting in front of the class. They think you like to sit in the back row. Wear glasses, they won't expect that. 
in group projects, it'll become time when your partners realize that you are a smart black person and starts and will start slapping. Throw them all under the bus by telling the prof about the, their unbecoming work ethic and days of free labor are over. When the teacher gives you, sings you out on, and asks you how we combat racism, tilt your head down towards your left hand, point your inner scripture towards your temple, look at your dead in the eye and by say, by any means necessary. Okay, So that's a little cute thing, but she's trying to say that this is how you would have to Again, it's meant to, to illustrate the things that she deals with all her life and she continues to deal with um, in a room. And I would argue that I think if she's in a room, she'll probably still do it now, but she's saying, this is how you do it. And again, it's here's what to expect. Here's how to deal with it. And you'll see different ones that she'll constantly interject in about, you know, uh, interracial dating or, or with how to go to a party or how to address people. It's again, it's meant to be fun, but it's poking fun at the things that she experiences from time to time. Okay, so I'm going to stop this recording.